We're ready to see what Miles the Munster will provide for the drivers of the SMB Cup Series. Presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters. Tonight, we're ready for the next round of this run for championship. The playoffs slowly but surely looming as well as we welcome you to coverage of the Mountaineer Outfitters 150 presented by Swag and LSR TV from the virtual Dover Raceway in Dover, Delaware. Good evening, I'm Wesley Outland. Joined alongside is Charles Wooten from Wichita Falls, Texas. And he is also in the director's chair as well. Charles, we're gonna have fun here in Dover. Concrete, one mile. This should be a fun race tonight. Yeah, I, I absolutely love coming to this track myself. You know, I think one of the coolest parts about this track, Wesley, is the bridge that goes over the track. Oh, uh, yes. I, I don't know if I'd want to be in it during a race, but uh, uh, that might be a little scary, but it's kind of fun all at the same time. Uh, definitely uh, looking forward to a really, really good race here. Well, actually, I have uh, been in work races at Dover, Delaware before, and actually, in the interest of safety, they do not let people cross over the tunnel or the bridge uh, when the races are going on. Uh, during pre-race, yes, you can cross over, uh, but right when the green flag falls, they make it where it's kind of forbidden, unless you're like media people taking pictures and video, then it's possible. But uh, it definitely is a thrill rush. I did it one time with the uh, the NASCAR K&N series uh, race when that used to be where their championship race used to be and uh and it is a fun time for sure we're ready to go for the mountain outfitters 150 should be an exciting race here tonight at the dover speedway just a little bit more time remains in practice and then they'll get ready to go to qualifying the drivers of the SB cup series ready to shake and bake around this one mile concrete facility it should be an interesting race here tonight charles yeah, it definitely is going to be an interesting race. And, you know, the interesting part about this race doesn't even start as the racing goes. It's going to start well before that. And what I mean by that, of course, uh, is some of the highlights, spotlights, uh, notable stuff we need to <laughs> mention here tonight. And that is your last season's uh, points championship, uh, Josh Altis. Uh, Matthew Williams, Spencer Hardison, and now, of course, Will Duvall, because he is racing here tonight. He didn't know if he was going to uh, last uh the last race anyway when he was here he'll never retire he'll yeah, never, he's retire. never retire he says he's gonna retire but he never retires so those four drivers wesley on lap one when they take the green uh they have to take a stop or a stop and go a drive through penalty uh due to incident points last race they can still qualify but they have to go through a drive through penalty at the start of the race hopefully they don't go a lap or two laps down here tonight all right, so qualifying is about to get underway right now. We've got about five cars, six cars on the racetrack at the same time. That includes Jacob Grant in the number five, Cody Terry in the 22, Ross Tatum in the number one, Caleb Smith in 12, Brockton Packard in 24, Jack Ely, Zach Peterson in 96 and 54, Will Duvall and Cody Furnett right now uh, of the uh, around 23 to 24 car field ready to go. Here's Cody Terry for MP Motorsports. He'll be right now setting the bar in the 22 car watch that live ticker down on the bottom and we'll see where he ends up on the board 21.8277 21.877 seconds lap number one cody terry and he'll have another shot to see if he can improve on his lap on qualifying charles yeah he definitely does and you know a uh, a sharp looking ride there uh, sporting uh, mountaineer outfitters and appalachian hauler hunters uh, and we know a bunch of their uh, big wigs out there watching tonight. So uh, no pressure to us. We have to do really good here, but no pressure to oh, us. We're out this. there watching. Uh, we always do. But a uh, sharp looking ride there, you know, uh, almost makes me want to pack up and, uh, you know, go out on a camping trip. As uh, you know, I haven't got to since uh, we did all this uh, broadcasting stuff. But uh, a good time for him. Jacob Grant still at the top as uh, Joshua Alt is going to come out in that 94 machine. Obviously hasn't put a lap in just yet. And uh, he is another one of those MP Motorsports out on track. We'll see what he can do. This is round number five of the series tonight here at Dover. And by the way, in the last four 
races, we've had four different winners. You see those names in bold green on the ticker. Wealth of Virginia for MP Motorsports. And Charles, having that green bar means whatever happens from now, you know you're going to the postseason. Yeah, you know, it's green. It means go. Uh, you really, that is, you know, it's like a lifeline. You know, if the boat's sinking, which, you know, whatever the phrase you want to use, you've got that lifeline. If you have a mistake, you don't have to worry about it. If you have a bad it. night, if you yeah. get caught up in an accident, not of your fault. Yeah. And, uh, you know, at a track like Dover, there's a really good chance that something like that uh, very well could happen as he's going to slow it down there and not complete an actual lap as Matt Dyer's out on the track. And the number 88 machine, 21.628 for him. Uh, pretty good time, top 10, as he's going to smack that wall. And, Wesley, that was what I was just about to bring up is how many people you think we're going to see smack that outside wall and leave their mark here at Dover? You know, this reminds me so much of Darlington, the lady in black. We always talk about the famous Darlington stripe. The same could be said here at Dover. Who's going to be in the wall and who can overcome the odds of those problems here for CEM Motorsports, the number 88 of Matt Dyer, another CEM Motorsports entry, number 51, Evan Coleman. He came very close last week to winning a race on the series, Charles. Yeah, he, he really did. And, and like you mentioned, four winners here in the uh, in the playoffs. That goes to show you just how competitive this uh, league is. Uh, you can't go to a race and say, okay, well, that guy's going to win. You know, you go to some of these other leagues out there that we've covered, and even some that we don't, and you see somebody uh, like Garrett Maines, and you know, well, there's your race winner. You can't say that about the SMB Cup Series uh, That's right. presented by Appalachian all -Inners. It's just not that way and here and you look now the 15 Braxton DeWeese could today finally be the day the night that Braxton DeWeese wins on the series yeah I definitely think he could and there you see a 21 605 for his second time that'll jump Evan Coleman up to seventh place uh and interesting enough here that uh, uh of course uh Joshua Altus did qualify, but none of his laps counted. Right. Uh, that's like a double whammy. Now, you're not only are you going to be starting in the back for your pit stall, you're also going to have to serve that drive through. So that is not what he wanted to see here tonight. As uh, unfortunately, he just, uh, you know, had a mistake on there, hit the wall, something happened. And unfortunately, he's going to be uh, mired with almost two penalties now coming into the start of this race. And qualifying has concluded. It'll be time now to introduce the starting lineup presented by ComServe Wireless as the field begins to grid now here for round number five of the SMB Cup Series presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters and the Mountaineer Outfitters 150. On the pole, it's Braxton DeWeese in the number 15 to the outside. Christian Gardner in the number seven, row one. Row two will find Jacob Grant, Pillsbury, Thanksgiving around the corner in the number five. Tucker Wingo, the New Hampshire winner in the 99. He'll start fourth, row number two. Row number three is going to be Matthew Williams in the number 28. And outside that 54, I think he is a good driver, just hasn't had his shot here. That is Jack Ely in the, the number 54. Row number four is going to be the 51 of Evan Coleman and the 18 of Robbie Helms. Another row number five for the top 10 is going to find Matt Dyer in the 88 machine to his outside. Caleb Smith in the number 12, top 10. Row number six, 11 starter. Number one, Ross Tatum to his outside. Side, Cody Fournette. He's close to winning. Could it be denied at Dover? He'll start 14. He'll start 12th uh, in car number 14. In a row seven, going to be Cody Terry in that 22 machine. To uh, his outside, going to be uh, Kenan, or Keenan Massey in the four machine. In row eight, you're going to have Rob Sherwood in the 29. Probably one of the uh, furthest back he's uh, started here. And the 10 of uh, Jonathan Woods. Row number nine, Zach Peterson to the 96 machine to his outside flank. Brockton Packer to the 24. He'll start 18th. The field begins to roll off pit road. Row number 10 to the top 20. It's going to be Cameron Zahari in that machine. Carson Zybar to correction. And Will Duvall in the 32. Row number 11 is going to find the 94 of Zach Peterson. 
No, Joshua Altus, he did not qualify. Neither did Spencer Hardison and Zachary Stone will make up the field of 23 drivers ready to go here tonight at Dover. Let's take a look at the sawblade.com weather conditions as we look and get ready to start this event. 69 degrees outside on the virtual Dover. Wind speed at three, track temperature 80 degrees. Conditions are absolutely clear. We're ready for the next round. Round number five, four different winners so far on the season for the SMB Cup Series. Presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters, the Mountaineer Outfitters. 150 about to come to green. Here they come out of turn number four to the Dry Dean restart box. We're underway. We're underway. We are kicking the concrete at Dover. To green flag here at Dover, underway. And quickly on the jump, it's gonna be Braxton DeWeese up to the number one position. Jacob Grant flanked behind him, nose to tell. Also Christian Gardner, Wingo Coleman, your top five. And quickly, as you said, Charles, they go single file in a hurry. Yeah, that, I knew it was going to happen. And these guys, uh, you know, they got a stern talking to in the driver's meeting uh, about being uh, cautious, don't press issues. Uh, you know, it's way too tricky of a track to just go out there and just press everything you can. Uh, so, you know, they, they warned them about it, told them calm down. Uh, there is incident limits. Every 17 incident li uh, X's here are incident limits. They will have to serve a penalty. So they've got to be really careful about getting into the outside wall, causing a caution, running into somebody. All of those things uh, build up, and eventually it could come back to bite you later. And this is 180 laps, am I correct, or is it 150? 150 laps, 150 It is 150. Miles. Okay, okay. I don't know. Part part of my broadcast screen wanted to say it was 180, but it's 150, so I was correct. Never never doubt yourself the first time, as they always say. Yes, so we're underway true. in the Mountaineer Outfitters 150, round number five. You see the four drivers in green, Wingo, Tatum, Hardison, and Altus, who are winners on the series. Of course... Altus, uh, they're showing him already out of the race. Gilliams and Duvall as well. I, I don't know if that's true or not. They might be behind pit wall. That is not true. Uh, and the reason that, again, uh, unfortunately, uh, our scoring system isn't perfect, uh, you know, like we are. So uh, it uh, it will update eventually. It's showing them a one lap down, and that's what I was afraid of uh, with these guys that had to serve. Uh, those were the three guys that had to go and serve a uh, penalty, or three of the four anyway, that had to serve a penalty. Um, Spencer Hardison... Uh, had to serve one as well. He's already made his way back up to 19th. He's made a position, and of course, uh, if he hasn't pitted already, he will have to, but that could be why uh, his is updated. And now you see right there, it's updated. Altus and Williams are now one lap down and not out of the race. It just takes him a minute to uh, get that transponder back there working again. <laughs> There we go. As again, we are still watching those drivers in the back. Of course, uh, the penalty having to be suffered from the previous race for those drivers. And again, course right now, one lap down. If there was a caution to come out, the 94 would get the free pass, the Daytona winner, and he would advance back on the lead lap. But right now, we're quickly to the whip on things uh, here at Dover with Braxton DeWeese out in front of the number 15 machine, Grant in second. There you see those cars as they work their way. First, second, third. Gardner behind them. Single file here at Dover as they work their way off of turn four back to the start finish line. And we put now, I believe, uh, coming up on 10 laps completed in this deal. 
Yeah, 10 laps complete, and uh, we know uh, for a fact that we uh, uh, did our due diligence homework and, uh, and got the information. They have five sets of tires, including the one on the car. So they have this set of tires, and they can take tires four more times uh, That's right. throughout this 150-lap race. And fuel window, we're looking around anywhere from uh, 40 to 43 laps at 50% fuel with one fast repair. Uh, and also, by the way, this is their second season and the first time they've ever been to Dover here on the season. First time ever, of course, Dover, a one-mile concrete oval here in the first state of Delaware. Also, in addition to having the racetrack, it used to have a harness uh, equestrian racing track for horse racing and in the middle of the infield, and there's the caution. Uh, and unfortunate problems. I mentioned how good that car looked, and unfortunately, it doesn't look as good now as uh, we're going to take a quick look here at the uh, swag replay and see exactly what happened to that 22 machine of Cody Terry. Oh, and right there, we wow. even have to go back just a little bit further uh, on uh, the replay. Is uh, looks like the two, uh, the 22, and that's the 29, I believe. It is the 29. Yep, getting the 29 together. of Rob Sherwood. Sherwood and Terry have looked like they've hooked up, and we're going to take a look here on an extended swag replay down the back straightaway here at Dover that has put us under our first caution flag. Let's watch them again, Charles, as they work their way, and it finally broke loose out of four. Yeah, and it looks like right there, ooh, uh, you saw the 22 kind of pop up in the air. It almost looked like a, you know, a sprint car. It looked like he wheel hopped him a little bit, but obviously yeah. uh, you can't wheel hop someone if they don't have an open wheel setup. But uh, after that uh, incident there, the 22 surprisingly still has the front of his car, but almost looking like an open wheel modified in the front. Uh, but, and by uh, the way, Keenan Massey also got in the wall there in the four car from that contact. So under caution, got a couple of cars on the pit lane for service, including Matt Dyer in 88. There goes Massey's damaged car where he pancaked the right side into the safer wall barrier into turn number one. And of course, Zachary Stone on pit lane in the 83. Rob Sherwood as well, along with Cody Terry, those drivers getting service on their cars here in the early going. Everyone else staying out in front. Sawblade com top five under caution for the first time here at Dover. Deweese, Grant, Gardner, Tatum, Wingo, your top five. We'll be back with more coverage from Dover in a moment on LSR TV and CRN Sports, your home for sim racing. Welcome, everyone, to the Bone Collector North American Whitetail Championship. No doubt the most exciting championship tournament that's ever hit the whitetail hunting industry. It's going to be broke down into 14 different regions. It's broke down to be fair, but it's broke down to celebrate the everyday hunters. This is one of the most unique championships that's ever been thrown. Let's get to competing. Let's get to having some fun. And we want to extend a uh, special thanks to a lot of people that are watching the broadcast, not just our fan listener base or listeners or viewers, but also the folks from uh, the sponsors of the series, of course, Mountain Outfitters and the Appalachian Hauler Hunters. And I think the folks from that commercial we just played as well, Charles. Yeah, uh, that we uh, got word some, uh, some of the good, fine folks over there uh, tuning in here tonight. Uh, and uh, we definitely welcome you to tuning in. Hopefully it's not the first time. If it is, welcome for the first time. Uh, we uh, definitely enjoy having you here. And, of course, uh, to all the regulars out here, there's a lot of regular fans that love tuning in here uh, to oh, yeah. watch this series. Uh, so, you know, we'll be back to racing here shortly. Unfortunately, just a, a small little uh, skirmish there, as you'll say, between the 22 and the 29. But... Uh, they, they've already cleaned the debris up off the track, and uh, lights are off, so we are going racing this next time by.
And back here at the Dover International Speedway after working our completion of the first caution. A couple of cars involved include the 29 of Rob Sherwood, the 22 of Cody Terry, who was still on the pit lane getting work done from damage, and the four car of Keenan Massey. They currently sit 18th, 19th, and 22nd on the grid. Getting ready to come back to the Dry Dean restart box and get this race back underway. 16 laps are completed. They'll be working lap number 18 with 17 complete when they come back to the green flag with Braxton DeWeese out in front in the number 15. Jacob Grant in the five. That's your inside and outside of row number one. Christian Gardner and Ross Tatum, the seven and one, making up row number two. Tucker Wingo, who has won on the series. He is fifth. Evan Coleman, currently also Jack Ely, Caleb Smith, Cody Fernett, Jonathan Woods, your top ten. As the pace car will get ready to accelerate, try down onto the banking, into the pit lane, back inside the Dry Dean restart box out of turn number three and four. Here come the Warlords in their kaleidoscope of virtual colors, ready to get back to it again. They'll send it to turn one. Whole shot will go to DeWeese, but here comes Grant battling it on the outside. Couldn't find anything there. He'll duck up single file as they exit two. Someone who was able to hang on to a spot, that is Ross Tatum, and I want to talk about him for just a minute, and uh, that thing is beyond that is not mellow yellow that is bright yellow but regardless of that i want to uh, compare some drivers here when you talk about different series last week ross tatum first win in the series uh here for that number one machine we had another driver do that uh just not too many what two weeks ago came back and did it again uh on the monday night cup series could we see another back-to-back first-time winner and second-time winner with Ross Tatum? He's sitting in third right now, running good. I think he may have a shot. Another lap of the board. They work their way up the high banks here at Dover, and it turns number one and two. Hey, want to send our thoughts and prayers and, and thoughts uh, continuously to uh, Brockton Packard in the number 24. He currently sits 13th on the racetrack. He's up five spots in the 24 car. Uh, understanding, uh, Charles, that he is uh, encountering some of the COVID symptoms of uh, the coronavirus, and he has been quarantined. But even though he's quarantined, it's not stopping him from racing. He's right now in the 13th position in that car number 24. Yeah, I mean, what better place to be quarantined at than inside your race car? I mean, <laughs> you can't ask for much more. But now, hopefully, uh, you know, all goes well there. I know it's a really good survival rate. So uh, we uh, we send our thoughts and prayers out to him that uh, all is well with him. But uh Still uh, almost uh, in the top 10. We'll be looking to see how he does uh, later on in this race for Shadow Racing. Uh, and uh, Wesley, I know it's a sports theme here tonight. And I would be guessing by the uh, skull and crossbones on there, it looks like he may be a Buccaneers fan. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who recently has the six-time NFL Super Bowl champion of Tom Brady. And my team... The Steelers are currently 9-0. What a season they've got going on for them. Steelers redemption. Man. And mind, I also tell you, Charles, I'm also in the number one spot in the Speed 51 Pigskin Classic as well. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, speaking of number one, there he is again. He's moved up to second place. I'm telling you, Ross Tatum has something for the guys – uh, we've had four winners in the playoffs. Could we see finally a second-time winner here in the playoffs? And could it be Ross Tatum? Could he pull a Devin West and win his first race and his second race back-to-back? -back? That's right. Ross Tatum picked up the win last week. And right now, he sits in position number two. There's nothing mellow about it. He's in that mellow yellow number one machine at the moment. Braxton Deweese is still the man leading the way. There you see him. And there's the man in second, riding on board with Ross Tatum. Sits there in the number two position. Then you've got uh, Matt Dyer. Got a good run going for him currently. Charles in the number 88 machine. He's up now to th second. Matt Dyer. And Tatum fighting for second. Tatum falling back to third. Matt Dyer to position number two. 
Yeah, that's, uh, you know, you've got to be fast because Tatum moved through that field in a hurry to get up to second place. And Matt Dyer just took it away from him while he was sitting still. So makes you wonder just how fast that 88 machine is in Matt Dyer's uh, hands as uh, he is just a rocket right now. I did see him Looking straight for the, the lead. Wall. Looking for the lead to the inside. Matt Dyer clears him in turn number three and four. New leader, first lead change of the race. Matt Dyer in 88. He started this race in ninth. He is now in the lead. Yeah, and that wasn't just taking the lead, Wesley. He just flat out just took it with an exclamation point and some dominance as uh, he took it and he has checked out to nearly a five tenths second lead already again that's what you call taking the lead putting the keys on the counter and checking out from that hotel matt dyer now the new leader in the number 88 machine braxton deweese will fall back to second starting this race from the pole i want to say that was like his third pole in a row for the number 15. Yeah, he's he's had some really really good luck uh, here this uh, this season, and you know I I use the word luck very loosely. You know, with this field, you can have luck to get on the pole, put on a good time, but it takes a lot of skill as well. Uh, and I'm really surprised that uh, you know we haven't seen him in victory lane more often yet. Thirty laps in. Rocking and rolling here around Dover. This 150 lap event for the Mountaineer Outfitters, 150 in round number five of the SMB Cup Series, presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters on LSR TV. Check out the new live sim racing TV.com. And while you're also doing that, check out WeRCRN.com for all of the podcasts, replays of all of our esports coverage that is on LSR TV. Matt Dyer, Braxton DeWeese, Rob Sherwood right now, your top three. And these are drivers that have no blue or green. Caution now. And we have a caution. It looks like it's going to be the number nine Hedrick's car crashing. Spencer Hardison. Problems for number nine, Spencer Hardison, who has won on the series. And he'll bring out the second yellow flag of the night. Here's our swag replay, Charles. Yeah, and he was one of these drivers as we watched the replay that had to do a drive through penalty. Uh, so unfortunate uh, for him. And right there, collected with the number seven. Whoa. Oh, hard into the wall. And uh, also getting with the number uh, 18 machine there yep. as well. But he, again, he had to serve a drive through penalty, which put him in the back of the field. Had he not had that uh, drive through penalty uh, from last week's race, this might not have happened, Wesley. He might have been further up in the field, uh, but unfortunately he was mired in the back. And, you know, you know, we don't knock the drivers that are in the back, but, you know, uh, that seems to be where incidents happen. They can happen at the front. They don't just happen to back, but you see them more back there. Other cars involved in that accident, along with Spencer Hardison, again, was the number seven of Christian Gardner and the 18 of Robbie Helms. Those cars also involved. It looks like everybody now coming down to the pit lane, except for Christian Gardner who was last uh, involved in that accident. He will stay now and go to the lead. But here comes the entire cavalry on pit lane. Four tires, two tires, no tires, fuel. And right now, it looks like Matt Dyer will exit the pit lane first, along with Rob Sherwood, who brought out a caution earlier in 29. Braxton DeWeese will exit off the pit lane third. Ross Tatum, Jacob Grant will exit fifth. He'll come out sixth on the scoring pylon. Behind the seven of Christian Gardner. Got to wonder as well, Charles, if the seven car, and it looks like he is going to make that effort to come down to the pit lane now. Yeah, I don't, I don't He will see give up the lead and let Matt Dyer have the lead back. Yeah, he almost has to come down here, and yes, he is. Again, we were 10 laps out from the fuel window when the caution came out. Yep. Uh, if you stayed out, you were really really chancing to get a caution and if you didn't you know for a fact at this track you're gonna go at least two laps down under green flag pit stop so yeah he had to come down 
More cars onto the pit lane. Again, includes Christian Gardner giving up the lead, along with Cody Terry in 22 in the 18 of Robbie Helms. Matthew Gilliams is also on the pit lane in the 28 and the 11 of Carson Zybart as well. Matt Dyer, the missile, as what people are calling him in the chat box. The man that's out in front, Rob Sherwood. Braxton Deweese, Jacob Grant, Ross Tatum, your saw blade top five. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back with more coverage from Dover under yellow. Second time in a moment. ETE Reman is the world's best remanufacturer of transmissions for import and domestic cars and trucks. Based in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, our customers are repair shops, auto parts stores, dealerships, and distributors. And with six nationwide warehouses, we're where and when you need us. So when you're looking for a transmission that is like new, only better, instill confidence and install ETE Reman. Back here at Dover, getting ready for the third attempt of a restart after the second caution flag of the race. Charles Wooten, Wesley Outland here with you. Hey, don't forget tomorrow night, the next round of the West Main App Auto Parts playoffs in the round of eight. Round one begins before they cut the turkey at Iowa Speedway. Coverage 1145 Eastern Time. 10.45 LSR TV time tomorrow night and also on CRN Sports for the trucks at Iowa. Field making their way back inside the dry Dean restart box as they get ready to exit off of turn number four. Here they come. Back to speed. Matt Dyer. We got a new nickname for him. The Missile pulls away in the 88. Like a thief in the night at Dover on the concrete. He set sail to P1 off two. Yeah, I, mean, I wonder if the, they got they call them the rocket. I'm mean, wonder if they need a missile or rocket or spaceship something because he is moving on. But look at this battle behind them. Uh, you've got the uh, 29 back there of uh, Robert Sherwood. He is back in this thing after that incident. He had his one fast repair. It is done. He doesn't have it for the rest of the race. That's a little earlier than I would like to use it, but he had to. And now he's up here battling with the uh, 12 of Caleb Smith, that Nintendo uh, paint job as always. And he's got the 94, one of his teammates of uh, Josh, uh, Joshua uh, Altis there as well. So uh, Altis tried to defend his championship, doing a good job. He has a win, but uh, mired back around 10th place right now in this race. The champion of season one won the opening race at Daytona. And currently, we, he will be one of those drivers that will fight for a championship uh, for the playoffs uh, when that comes up for the postseason. Right now, just in round number five for the regular season right now. But again, you see the drivers in green on the scoring ticker to the left of your monitor. And those are drivers that have won races like Ross Tatum. Tucker Wingo, Joshua Altis, I mentioned, and of course, even Spencer Hardison, Charles, just had bad luck a moment ago. He's in the nine. He's all the way mired back in the top 20. But again, he could have a bad night. It doesn't matter. He goes to the postseason with that win that he had a while back at Kentucky. Yeah, and not to uh, cut you off on that one, but uh, look at Matt Dyer. He is back in 15th now. Uh, again, uh, not 100% sure what happened there, but he looks to be underpowered uh, as he just dropped from the lead. You see, he doesn't have any damage, but he is falling back in a hurry right now. Oh, yeah. From wow. first to 16th in about two laps. But again, as uh, you, when you look close on that car, there's no real damage. Uh, to it, so I'm not sure what he did, but he is definitely underpowered. 
uh, and falling deep, deep in this field and at the pace he's going. And we, and we didn't see him hit the wall. We didn't see him hit no. the wall anywhere. Uh, no, no contact of any kind that we saw. And uh, again, just uh, no damage on the car. So uh, very interesting to see what happened there. Uh, we may have to uh, chat with him if we have a chance, but it doesn't look like uh, we have him on radio communication. But uh, Matt Dyer has fell all the way back to 17th from the lead, all the way back down to 17th inside the top 15, top 20. Well, almost makes you wonder if it was calculated of some kind, but uh, the battle is on for the lead now, though, and that is going to be Braxton DeWeese battling for it with uh, Grant and Wingo as they're going to go side-by-side uh, side for second. Wingo going to scrape the wall there, and that's going to – or, sorry, Grant going to hit it. Wingo is going to get by him in the 99, and now that's going to open the door for Ross Tatum. So a good battle for the lead right now between four to five cars. DeWeese back to the lead for the second time here. And not anymore. Down to turn one, Tucker Wingo will now go to the number one position. So uh, battles going on uh, throughout this race. It's not just uh, in one particular place. Uh, and I'm curious to see if uh, DeWeese can win this thing. Could it be Tatum? Grant has a good car as well. Wingo obviously has a fast car. He's out front uh, here at the moment. There's probably early on in this race, and again, this could change depending on uh, you know crashes, wrecks, uh, damage, stuff like that. But right now, Wesley, I think it's safe to say there's probably five to six, maybe even seven cars that probably have a car that could win this race. And we are about to put 50 laps on the board. Still 100 laps remaining. F race going by fairly quickly. Only two cautions stopping things here for the Mountaineer Outfitters 150. Round number five of the SMB Cup Series presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters on LSR TV. And for those that are listening on CRN Sports, and they go back into the corner and to the inside is Wingo's car. And again, he's one of those drivers, Charles, that we mentioned and has already won on the series. Could he be the first repeat winner and then you got a guy like Braxton DeWeese. He's hungry. He wants a win. He's come so close. I think of Jacob Grant. I think of Jack uh, uh, or Ely. Jack Ely, Caleb Smith, all these drivers. Even Cody Fournette has had really good runs here in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, these guys are, uh, you know, again, the competition level here is just outstanding as to how good uh, you got to be to hang with it, you know. It's about a uh, 23 car field, so that is the entire field there. 23 cars, uh, but you know that's 23 talented drivers uh, going around this uh, track. So, uh, oh, yeah. you know, definitely it's a blast. We look forward to coming here uh, to the uh, again the SMB Cup Series presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters every single week. You know, there, there's those mornings you wake up and you're like, ah, oh, oh, it's it's. It's a day. I have to wake up. But when we get to Wednesdays, <laughs> that ain't one of the days. It's like, oh, man, yes. I, I got some uh, cup cars, especially somewhere like Dover. Uh, you know, you can't ask for a better race. As Wingo is still the man leading the way, we watch this battle continue. Behind Tatum, this is uh, the driver of 12, Smith, and Jack Ely. Jack Ely and Smith battling for fifth. Here comes Smith to the inside. He's got a run. Couldn't clear him. Got another shot. Carries that momentum on the inside. On the exit of four. To the driver door of Ely. And Ely will still power and clear him as they go back to turn one. Yeah, it's just uh, awesome. These battles going on back here. And, of course, uh, you know, you go up to the front. You still got this battle. It's there. It's uh, heating up a little bit more each lap we go by you know you saw wingo get by deweese early on i uh, just said see you later took off but now deweese is reeling him back in that makes you wonder you know 
these guys uh, practice with these uh, cars week in and week out. Does the Weiss have a better long run car? While we have that chance, let's pull this up. We got their last laps here. Uh, it's in and they're going to cross the line right there. And we'll see. Wingo, 23-195. And uh, so look at that. 29 or 23 195 for your top two. They're dead even at the line, Wesley, on their speed. There you last go. Lap. Look at that. What a consistent amount of pace for all of those drivers as you see them almost dead even. Deweese and Wingo. That and is. now Deweese going back to the lead. And, and I got to say this, Charles. We remember what he did on the Adrenaline I Racing League on Sunday nights. And, and then we see, you know, now what he's doing now in the SB Cup Series. He is hungry. He is desired. He wants a victory. We got a problem. One car down below the bottom of the apron. The 96 machine of Zach Peterson. Caution and the third out. caution will come out on lap number 57. Swag replay. That is unfortunate for uh, for uh, Peterson here, and just all by himself, just just uh, gets into the wall for MV Motorsports. And uh, unfortunately, you know, we talked about that modified. We like modifieds, but we don't like them when they aren't supposed to actually be modifieds. Uh, when they start out as a NASCAR, and you can see the radiator and the grill and the and the cage there, that's uh that's a sign of a bad thing. So he does have a fast repair. He'll be able to use it. Uh, to get that guard fixed, but uh, unfortunate for uh, for Zach Peterson there in the 96. Caution out for the 96. Peterson smoke bellowing from the rear end of that car virtually as he works his way back around the concrete here at Dover. They're going to come back down to the pit lane. And we will have another round of pit stops. Here we come. Braxton DeWeese, Wingo, Tatum, Grant, Altus will not pit. Here comes the rest of the cavalry. As they all cross under the flag stand, but the yellow flag is waving. 96, Peterson smoke continuing to bellow from that car as here comes the rest of the cavalry down pit road. Four tires, fuel, two tires, no tires. What will the call be? I got a feeling they're all going to take on four tires here, though, Charles. Yeah, four tires. I, I don't see why anyone would take two at this time then again if you're gonna make a gutsy call why not make it early in the race when you still have time to recover from it uh we'll That's just right. see however uh joshua Altus is not gonna take any tires and uh, i do want to point out about zach peterson real quick you see that he is smoking everybody can see that uh <laughs> if you go in a closed pit uh, which is why it wouldn't let him in. A lot of drivers will opt to go ahead and pull that car into the pit road when it's smoking like that, just so they know the engine won't expire. If the engine expires, well, then you're really in a heap of trouble. However, he had a feeling that it would make it, so he stayed out so that he wouldn't suffer that end-of-line penalty because you right. have the fast repair, but if you get it and then have to go to the end of the line, it doesn't save you. This way, he's going to gain three or four more spots than he normally would have been anyway. And also, by the way, uh, you do have the 94, the 9, and the 7 coming down as well as the 10. And, and again, if you pit before it is officially your time to pit, Damage or not, you will suffer a penalty from the SMB Cup Series officials. So, a good call there. And, and now we see also the 94, Joshua Altis on the pit lane. He'll exit. Robbie Helms in the 18 on pit lane as well. He'll exit. Also, uh, Christian Gardner, Zachary Stone, Ross Tatum exiting off the pit lane. Cody Terry, just some of the other cars in the back that have come to the pits for service. A new leader, number 12. That is Caleb Smith out in front, the Nintendo car. Braxton DeWeese fall back to second. Tucker Wingo, Jacob Grant, Jack Ely, your sawblade.com, top five. We're gonna go uh, side by side so you don't miss the thing. More coverage in a moment from Dover when we return. We're based out of West Monroe, Louisiana. Uh, we do custom t-shirts, racing. We'll do any, actually any shirt. We'll do uh, schools, churches, fundraisers. We do a ton of event shirts. Uh, as you can see on our board here, uh, all around our uh, banner, personalized. I mean, it, we'll do anything. 
It doesn't matter to us. We got the custom rugs. Um, we use all the, you know, top quality shirts, you know, inks and everything, uh, hoodies, um, hats. We do embroidered hats, uh, embroidered shirts. Uh, you know, just you can call us for anything. Uh, we do offer the bag and fold uh, to where we, you know, you can receive them and they're already labeled and tagged and bagged, uh, ready to give out to your customers. So, so like you just call us and just tell us, hey, this is what we're looking at doing. And um, if we're going to put the car on there, it is 125 quantity minimum. Uh, if it's without the car, it's 60 quantity minimum. That's strictly on the racing stuff. Um, if it's a business or something, if you race on Texas shirts, you know, it's a little bit differently. Um, you know, you can call us. It just depends on your quantity and ink colors. Everything is hand drawn. I mean, everything. We don't Photoshop anything onto it, onto a shirt or anything like that. Everything that we we go through, everything is drawn, and which is the reason for the uh, art fees. Because uh, we do have several graphic artists that draw for us, and um, you know they're really good. So, yeah. so what we do is is on any any package that you do, we can we can mix and match. We can do any colors. You can do purple, red, blue, green, and do the rest black. It doesn't matter to us. Uh, with your design on there, we can do hoodies. We can do hoodies, long sleeve shirts, t-shirts, tank tops. Um, it doesn't matter. I mean, just it's, it's almost limitless what you can do, and you can put all that together in that package to make that minimum, you know, requirements. They can call us 318-278-7191, um, or they can email us at bulletprooftees uh, at yahoo.com, or they can go to the website bulletprooftees.com. Approaching halfway here at Dover in the Mountaineer Outfitters 150. Welcome back to our coverage on LSR TV and CRN Sports. For those that are listening, Wingo and Deweese continue to battle for the lead on lap 64. They're working on, and here it comes now, Deweese for the third time, for the fourth time, leader in the 15 car. Yeah, they are battling uh, again early on in this race. I, well, when, hey, really, Wesley, I can't see early. We're at 65, working at 65. Coming up um, on halfway. Yeah, 86 to go right now. So we're coming up on halfway. This race is uh, not early on anymore. But man, look at the battle going on for this lead right now. Is uh, we're on the back trunk here uh, of the uh, number 15 of Braxton Deweese. Uh, looking back at uh, Wingo there as we switch over to Wingo, you can see. So really about the top six have pulled away from the rest of this field and kind of checked out from them. And uh, we'll just have to kind of wait and see if the rest of the field can bunch back up. But they're taking it fairly easy here, Wesley. I expected to see some beating and banging on short track racing, but that's not what we've seen so far. The leader, Deweese, out in front. And there is the man behind him beating his door down. That's Wingo. In second, Jack Ely right there trying to close in on him for that second spot. We'll see. I'm wondering, how, you know, we always try to predict it, Wesley. When do you think we're going to see these guys really go side by side, start, you know, rubbing doors a little bit, uh, rubbing fenders? I think when we get in that uh, 40 to go range, being that this is the short track, I think 40 to go, we're really going to see these guys, you know, ramp it up a little bit, and they're not going to want to be back in fifth, sixth, seventh place. If they think they've got a car to win, I think with about 40 to go, they're going to be saying, okay, look, get out of my way, or I'm going to use the chrome horns to get you out of my way. And that's going to be lap 110 for those that are keeping track of that. 68 laps complete now, approaching halfway on lap 69, and it is Braxton DeWeese still on in front. Hungry, determined, wanting to get a win on the SB Cup Series to make the fifth different winner in five races of season two. And you know, Charles, that just shows you the competitiveness of this series and how there is just so many different brands of teams that can win on any given third Wednesday night. Yeah, it, it definitely is. Uh, you know, we, we mention it all the time. They're just so good. It's, whoo, speaking of good, uh, Jacob Grant just got way loose. Sorry, no, uh, Jack uh, Ely got really loose uh, right in front of uh, Grant. Grant was able to uh, get out of the way of it. Those two swap spots. But yeah, the competition level here, the skill level, uh, is just outstanding. These guys doing an amazing job uh, doing what they do. And uh, it's just amazing to see 
uh, how many winners we could. Could we go different winners throughout this entire uh, season? So far, we've really proven that to be the case. On the concrete jungle here at Dover International Speedway. They work their way off of turn number four. Approaching halfway in a couple of more laps. And Deweese, the pole car, still out in front. Wingo, right there, nestled behind him. One wrong slip and he'll capitalize. And then you've got two other packs led by Grant Ely and Coleman. And then Fernet, Packard, Dyer, and Altus in that other pack. Five seconds back behind the leader, and we approach halfway next time by. Yeah, half time to go, or half time to go, halfway to go next time by. And this pack here, and then you've got this pack back here, and uh, Ross Tatum. You know, I, I really thought he had a shot to win this. He is mired back in the field right now. Uh, and his last pit stop, Wesley, I want to point out here 4.7 seconds. I have a feeling we know why Tatum is back in this field right now. I don't think he took tires. That would look like a fuel-only stop on his last run. I think he's saving his tires. He may be predicting a, a couple of green-white checkers here tonight. So, uh, I, yeah, and you can see right there he's getting loose. I don't, I don't think he took tires. He almost couldn't have taken tires. He's saving all his sets of tires for the end of the race. Just after halfway here on the concrete. Let's kick some concrete. Extended here at Dover. Caution out trouble, and that's Braxton DeWeese that has crashed. The leader in 15 has crashed in the 15 car. Problems for the Ohio native. That is he not brings what out he the fourth yellow flag. Let's see what happened, Charles. Well, he was fighting it all the way down the straightaway. And just just hammers it right into the outside wall and luckily everybody's able to avoid him uh, again just an unfortunate deal there as we go back let's take this look and let's go uh let's go on board here with let's him run on see. board with him and let's listen to this he was already loose off four oh and yeah uh, he saved it, and then he didn't save it, and that's unfortunate. Uh, but again, they have that fast repair, as uh, he can see pit road. But unfortunately, he's going to have to go all the way around in order to get down it. But uh, honestly, thinking he might have over overcorrected the car, whenever he lost it, he he almost lost he lost control of it. Obviously, on the on the front stretch, and when he bounced off the wall or grazed off the wall per se, then he had no other choice but to then hit the wall. And and you see the end result of 15 on pit lane right now. A tough break for the pole car. Bad luck continuing to deal its hand to the number 15 of DeWeese. Yeah. Matt Dyer on pit lane, Jonathan Woods on the pit lane as well. So is Matthew Gilliams. Caleb Smith, Ross Tatum, all on the pit lane for service. 
And looking, Ross Tatum, 14.2 seconds on his stop. He did take four tires and fuel that time. And this is what he was waiting for as uh, we can pull those uh, real quickly on uh, to uh, the screen. You can see their pit stops right here. Wingo, two. Your top seven drivers, two uh, stops. Doesn't mean they've taken tires every time, but they've been down two times. You go back down to Tatum. He's been down pit road four times, but we know for a fact he did not take tires on uh, one of those at least. So, right. you know, this is where it's going to get tricky. We don't know how many sets of tires. We know he's been down four times. Uh, so, you know, you start with a set on there. So you have four sets left. We know he's used at least one of those because we just saw him take tires and fuel. However, he could have taken them uh, uh, at least two other times. So he could potentially have one set of tires left or he could have three sets of tires left. You know, it really gets tricky to see how these guys really play this play the strategy out. And Tatum still on the lead lap, if you will, even though he's pitted four times. Five cautions so far stopping this event. This most recent one for Braxton DeWeese. And even though he got involved in the caution, Charles, he is still on the lead lap in the 15, just all the way back in 15th and car 15. Yeah, you can see right there uh, as uh, the car looking mighty good. They went out there and they put some of that 200 mile an hour duct tape on it, got it all patched up and uh, looking good. So he will be back in contention probably before long. Uh, in the number 15, he's still odd. I'm used to referring to him as the 28 machine, but uh, he's in that number 15. And, you know, uh, you haven't got to say it on air, but a nice looking ride as well. And now Tucker Wingo back to the lead in that 99 machine. As the it's lights are off on the pace car, we'll get ready to come back for a restart. It'll be lap number 85 when they come back to the Dryden restart box with Wingo out in front along with Jacob Grant, row one, row two, Jack Ely still in the hunt of things. Currently up three positions along with Evan Coleman up three and fourth and 51. Cody Fournette in fifth. Brockton Packard up 12 spots. He's in sixth. Keenan Massey, after his problems earlier in the race, is now back to seventh, along with Joshua Altus, eighth. Matt Dyer, Robbie Helms, the top 10. And uh, what a quickly is red flags in here. I want to pull up that to weather again. You know, it says it's clear outside, but look at all the clouds. Uh, it may be clear, but the clouds have definitely started to roll over 79 degrees. So one degree lower on the track tip because of those clouds as we come to the green flag. And uh, there's the flag man there. He's going to wave it and green flag back in the air once again. And Wesley, again, not too many cautions. It's been a uh, fairly good race as Wingo uh, took a whole shot there and it gets out to the front with a uh, nice size lead over the 54 of Ely. Nice camera angle from the flag stand for the restart. 85 in now as they get ready to work their way off of turn number four. Approaching lap 100 in the final 50 laps. And again, as Charles uh, reiterated on, he's got to fill in on lap 110 with 40 to go. That uh, the pressure is really going to turn up and mount and make some type of a charge here for these drivers as they work their way again off the corner out of turn number four. Back down the front straightaway. Aerial coverage provided by All American Pools. And a really good angle there. There's the one of the bridges. Two here. That's one of the bridges uh, we were talking about. As you see, no fans on there. And there's the other bridge right there, the Ally Bridge. And uh, again, just some really, really good battles going on here. You see a battle for uh, currently fourth position. Also one going on uh, for sixth position just behind them. And Tatum back into fourth position again i really think uh he has a, a winning car here and with his strategy on tires i think he's got a winning strategy as well in that number one mellow yellow machine and you know that building on the back straight away that's a casino well oh hopefully somebody's got some good luck here tonight then <laughs> 
And uh, we know we're we'll leader visiting. Jack Ely out in front in 54. How about that? Yeah, Ross well, Tatum looking to the lead on the inside. Yeah, the uh, Tatum said, I'll take that. Is, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, Ely not even going to get credited with leading a lap there as he quickly had it taken away. And then he's going to slide back to third as Matthew Williams is going to take that away as well. So, unfortunately, Ely uh, sliding backwards almost like uh, the 88 of Matt Dyer did uh, not too long ago. And Matt Dyer currently sitting in ninth position. Uh, so he also had a 7.5 stop that last time. So I think these guys are just not taking tires, and that's what's causing them to slide backwards. They just can't run the speeds and handle the car the way they could early on in the race. And Matthew Gilliams, I know Allison in the uh, broadcast chat box going crazy right now, cheering her family member on there in the number 28 as Matthew Gilliams will move to second. He's one of those drivers that are obviously uh, outside the top 10. But with a win, put that green box on there for that MP Motorsports entry. If he gets it done tonight. Guys are battling extremely hard and trying to do just that. MP Motorsports course uh, representing second place. No team here for Ross Tatum. He's a free agent. You know, you pick up the win here. That uh, free agent uh, status may go away pretty quick, Wesley. Working their way off the corner at lap number 93. So a long way to go here as we are underway with Ross Tatum. And that number one car, there he is, the free agent you mentioned. In the Melly Yellow number one. How old Gilliams in second, Smith to third. Good run for those drivers as well as we approach five laps to lap 100, Charles. Yeah, we are just clicking away laps very quickly. And, uh, you know, oh, we got two cars down low. Oh, Who no, that's it? Jack Ely. Jack Ely, I think it's Tucker Wingo as well. How Jack Ely, Tucker Wingo have crashed. Yeah. There's the caution, and it will be interesting. Keep an eye on the 96 of Zach Peterson. We'll check in on that here in a second. Let's go back and take a look at the replay. I'm debating as to when the caution actually came out because the 96 slid sideways, but you see these two get together right here. Wow. This doesn't trigger the caution. Still no caution, and we're holding it. He's holding the green flag. Oh, we're not holding it. And right there, as the 96 slid, the caution came out. So did the caution get thrown for the 54? Or was it on the 96 because of him sliding sideways? Yeah. That'll be an interesting one to tell. Uh, Jack Ely and Tucker Wingo get together. And then the 96, as you said, the red 96, a big red, Zach Peterson spun. And if you noticed again, the green lights were on the entire time until the 96 spun and then they threw the caution yeah so uh you know I, it makes you wonder if the uh the, the official up in the uh, scoring tower there is going to credit that caution with the 96 and again these uh these are i racing thrown caution so uh is it going to be on the uh 96 did they count him sliding sideways to trigger it or was it uh the 54 in front of them. We'll have to wait and see on that one. And again, they have a, uh, a similar rule to the uh, Sunday uh, series where it's a kind of claim your caution. If you think you were at fault or, you know, could have been at fault, you're not sure, uh, you got to claim it a little bit. And, you know, kind of an honor system because they will, the, the admins are writing all this down throughout the race and every incident goes under review uh you know kind of like uh wesley i know you're a football uh, fan but when you get in was the last two minutes of the game yeah. uh challenges and stuff all go under review plays like that that's how it is with every incident on the track everything goes under review 
And, you know, we have another series that we compete on on Sunday night, as you mentioned, 1030 Eastern. And that is the uh, iRacing Northwest Tour Super Late Models presented by Joe's Racing Products. And, and they have what they call the tap rule, the tap out rule. And, and that is if you take blame for caution, you take your penalty or you take whatever the EOL is and you uh, have not worry about anything post after. However, if you are involved in an accident, you don't call claim for it. You protest it, and then they review it later. Then you are subject to fine, penalty, disqualification, suspension, whatever the calls are after they review the race. Yeah, it, it, it's very similar to, you know, uh, if you uh, go to a court or whatever and, you know, you, uh, you don't take the plea deal and you're guilty, and then uh, – that plea deal goes off the table. Your plea deal is your EOL during that race. No, okay, I take my EOL, no further penalty. If you don't, well, then uh, then the judge finds you guilty and uh, you go to the slammer for a while. But, uh, you know, and that's what happened here uh, in this race from last week uh, with an example of uh, your last year's points champion, uh, Joshua Altus. He was involved in two incidents. He didn't claim them uh, or say that he might have been at fault. And he got hammered with that penalty of the uh, EOL where he had to start at the uh, end after he qualified. So he didn't get to qualify. And then he had to, you know, do a drive through penalty at the start of this race. So the penalty was a little bit more severe than it would have been. So this race continues on. As we approach now lap 100, next time around. And uh, quickly, as the lights are off, I do want to point out here, we were watching the 96 of Zach Peterson. He was uh, multiple laps down. He had just got waved around, uh, which means uh, he that he we saw him come down pit road. So uh, that last time, he was not credited with the caution uh, but uh, you do see Tucker Wingo going to the back of this field now as you see everybody uh, letting him by. Tucker Wingo again in the 99 involved in that last caution with the 96 of Peterson. So, unfortunately we, for them. Yeah, very tough break. We're ready to come back for green. Underway. Ross Tatum, lap 100, 50 laps to go here at Dover. And again, I really do think Ross Tatum has got the car to go, and we're going to get a caution regardless. And, well, it's the scoring Ely, tower. I think, involved again. There's another big wreck. It's Gilliam's involved. 28 caught up in it. So are some other cars. Massey in four. We'll take a look here and uh, see if we can't get that scoring tower to uh, get out of the way for us. We'll take a quick look here at the swag replay and uh, we'll see. No, the 20 wow, looks like just Gilliams got loose. just lost it. Gilliams got cleared by Grant. He got punted by Peterson. Oh, or was that Altus? And then Massey and a couple other cars piled into him. Move scoring pile on. It doesn't want to move for us. And we have a caution there again. Seventh a... yellow of the race. We're going to take a look at this from, uh, let's look at the nose cam here from uh, Keenan Massey. And uh, this see. is the four car. Yeah, he uh, was kind of innocent victim in this was that relax remodeling uh, number four machine. And he sees it and he, there's nowhere for him to go. Just right. Yeah, there's nowhere him. to go. Nowhere to go. Unfortunate uh, for Massey there as uh, he's going to have massive damage as well. But uh, he'll get it all sorted out as we go back to live. And back to uh, your yellow car that's out front in the metal yellow, uh, number one, uh, Ford. Again, I really think Ross Tatum has a shot here uh, to win this. Tatum in the one car out in front. And there goes Peterson flying by the 96 machine. Tatum, Grant, and boy, I'll tell you what, what a save for Grant as well, because I thought Grant was going to get caught up in it. 
Yeah, I as we go continue. under caution again. Cars are pitting in the back behind the top 15. That's Keenan Massey, Matthew Gilliams, Braxton DeWeese on pit road again. Joshua Altis, Rob Sherwood, and Zachary Stone. Saw blade top five. There they are. Tatum under 49 to go. Here, remaining at Dover, is trying to be the first repeat winner on the series. Back with more coverage in a moment. The DK4 by NAP represents the next level of broadheads, providing you with fixed and mechanical blade technology in one devastating head. Available in both crossbow and compound models, the DK4 features a pivoting main blade, which eliminates deflection off bone and maintains momentum, while delivering true field point accuracy, as well as two deploying bleeder blades for an inch and a quarter secondary cutting diameter, equating to devastating wound channels. And with an internal blade retention system, there are no O-rings, collars, or rubber bands, just the confidence knowing that the blades will open on impact no matter your target. Featuring a bone-crushing trophy tip and diamized blade sharpening process for true ultra-sharp blades, the DK4 Broadhead from NAP. Hunt with confidence. Back here at Dover, Kenny ready for the restart for the SMB Cup Series. Round number five, season two, presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters. This is the Mountaineer Outfitters 150 from the Dover International Speedway, virtually on iRacing, on LSIR TV, and Searing Sports. Wesley Outman, along with Charles Wooten. And we are getting ready to come back to the restart box. And there'll be 40 laps to go. When they come back to green here, 46 remaining. Just under 40 to go as they come to the Trident restart zone out of turn number four. Big restart lead for Ross Tatum. Caught everyone else asleep at the wheel, and we are back to this thing. 45 remaining, Charles. Yeah, I really think, uh, you know, I, I thought 40 laps to go would be the go time. I, I'm going to alter that. I think it's right now, and the only reason I say now is because there's 45 laps to go coming up on 44 to go, and the field got bunched up. So if you're going to make your go time 40 to go, why not make it 45 if you got punched back up? I think that 45 window or 40 window started at lap 45 and it is go time and it already looks like they're getting, uh, you know, a little bit more uh, aggressive there, especially if you look at Tatum, who just said, see you later and just jumped uh, right out to the front. He does not want to be back here dealing with any of the chaos that could be ensue behind him. And there goes that battle off of turn two. Tucker Wingo trying to redeem himself from his accident earlier. He has climbed all the way back to six in the 99. Ferry right behind him. Yeah, Cody yeah. Terry in 22 from his problems earlier. Good run for him. Yeah, good run for Cody Terry. Obviously, he was involved in an issue earlier with the 29. He recovered from that, and a good run for him. Obviously, sporting 
uh, the Mountaineer Outfitters uh, from the Mountain uh, Mountaineer Outfitters uh, 150 and Appalachian Holler Hunters, who of course uh, present this whole series. So uh, good to see him back in uh, the top 10 right now, sporting them on his car. Uh, well, we'll see if he can do it. Brockton Packard, who uh, again we talked about him a little bit earlier. He was a little further back. He's in the top 10 right now, Wesley, sitting in eighth place, and uh, he is all over the back bumper right now, Cody Terry. Side by side. Here comes Brockton Packard for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers colors battling Cody Terry for that spot. Move him now to seventh. Terry will fall back to eighth. And there's another side by side battle again. I, I knew we were coming into it right now. 39 laps to go under the 40 mark. As a Grant going to get by uh, Fournette there, and they're still uh, duking it on uh, further back in this field as well. You go way back here, and oh, somebody into the wall hard. That was the 83. That's the 80, 83 of Zachary Stone. He'll keep on going, no caution, but Zachary Stone with a problem. Just, it looked like he may have got loose, hit the wall, something happened, but he definitely hammered the inside wall. I uh, was able to keep it going, so we won't see the caution for that, and that's unfortunate uh, for Stone, as uh, you know, he, he probably was wanting the caution, but being part of it, not how he wanted it. Uh, he is on the lead lap though right now, and I want to point out, Wesley, that uh, out of 21 drivers currently on track, 20 of those 21 are on the lead lap. It looks like he's got a skull on his car for Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah, it says the boring on the side of the sh side of the car in the hood. Okay, well then it's not Austin. I just see a skull, so I thought it was Stone Cold. So yeah, maybe there's not. definitely nothing <laughs> boring about Stone Cold Steve Austin. That's for sure. So uh, not sure we uh, don't have a way to communicate with him, but uh, yeah, it says the boring, and it has, uh, it's interesting. We'll have to see if we can figure that out for next week to report on it. But uh, right now, Tatum. He has checked out. He has a one-second lead, over one-second lead over Caleb Smith. Uh, but, again, we haven't seen Caleb Smith this far up in the field. He's been up in the field, but not as high as second. This is the first time he's been there today. So does he have something in that Nintendo Switch number 12 uh, forward that he's been holding off? Again, did he click it into overdrive and say this is go time with uh, 34 laps to go? Yep. They're under 35 remaining. And there is the man in second spot, the Nintendo, number 12. Caleb Smith, patiently waiting. He's in the run for an opportunity to win. The driver out of Concord, North Carolina, for CEM Motorsports in the number 12. Ely, even with those problems he had in the 54. The man out of Wall, New Jersey, for Banff Motorsports, Jack Ely, still in third. What a run. Yeah, he is doing a good job. And, you know, you look at him. Also, Tucker Wingo having some issues. So a lot of these guys are able to recover uh, from uh, the uh, incident, uh, early incidents in this race, whether it be their, their fault or uh, not. Uh, they're able to uh, recover it. The only one that was unable to recover uh, is uh, Will Duvall, who's uh, 50 laps down. Uh, not sure what happened there. Spencer Hardison, though, uh, one of your winners here in the playoffs. He is out of the race back in 22nd. He's already locked in with the green, so it's not going to hurt him too bad. But still, too many mulligans, and even too many mulligans you're not going to be able to recover from. Tatum, Smith, Ely, Wingo, Grant, top five. 30 laps to go. Here at Dover, and I had a feeling that around 30 remaining, that's when the pressure is going to mount. But like you said, since we had this last restart, Charles, Ross Tatum has just set sail and pulled away from the pack of the number one. The interval to now almost 2.2 seconds. While Smith and Ely battle for the bridesmaid spot, Tatum in the bright middle yellow one has checked out and says, see you. Yeah, Tatum is just gone. Uh, 2.833 seconds. Again, when I said he was one uh, second ahead, that was on lap 
35. So coming up about 10 laps later, he has gained 1.96 seconds over this field. Tatum, he's not checked out. He's in his own zip code right now. As uh, you know, they're going to have to give him a new uh, new area code uh, here soon because he is just gone from the rest of his field as we go to uh, your aerial cam here. And there you see nobody around him. You uh, will follow him as he comes right to the middle of the backstretch. When he gets to the line, we'll switch over to uh, to uh, Jack Ely there and see where he's at. But uh, again, there's a big gap right there. We go to him. And not as much as I thought it'd be, but uh, probably about a quarter of this track. And remember the aerial coverage presented by All American Pools. As you see from high above, turn number three and four. Under 30 laps to go. Yeah, right at 25, 25. laps to go. Yep. 25 remaining. And there's that battle for second continuing. By the way, Ross Tatum not only trying to go back to back as a winner, he won last week. He is also trying to be the first repeat winner on the series in the number one car, Charles. And laps is winding down. He is showing sheer domination in the Mellow Yellow Ford, number one. Yeah, again, uh, and this would be the uh, second time in four weeks we have had a driver win his first race and then go back to back and win his second race. You know, we talked about it uh, when you're hot, you're hot. Well, you know, does that somehow carry over? Did we pull that uh, that greatness of winning two races in a row over from the Northwest Cup Series? Because I, if we did, I think we know where it landed. Uh, again, you know, Devin West getting his first win ever in the series, comes back with that momentum, wins his second one. Same exact thing here for Ross Tatum. Wins his first race ever, and now he's looking to win his second race right behind it. Caution. Then, Yellow flag, eighth time, 22 to go. And we'll look, Robbie Helms is off pace. He's on pit road, though, and I don't see any damage for him. I'm wondering if the caution was for him or if he was just coming down pit road as we were 31 laps in. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not thinking Maybe the, they thought he was too slow and they threw the yellow. Something here. I'm not sure, but. We'll take another look at this, see if we can figure out something. But, yeah. We'll take a look maybe around the 94, who's got damage already of uh, Altus. Joshua Altus, yep. But that is, uh, I believe it's a DraftKings uh, number 18. And uh, again, uh, he was slow on the track. He just dropped off the pace, went down below the apron, and the next thing you know, they threw a caution. Oh, oh that's why number seven in the wall, Gardner. Again, uh, it took us a minute to find him, but we'll go back here and look at Christian Gardner and see what happened to him. And I thought maybe the 11 got into the wall and kind of clipped him, but that was not the case. As uh, we'll just have to kind of wait and see here. Also running the uh, Mountaineer Outfitters. And the 11 did get in the wall. Oh, and there you see just... Oh, boy, bottleneck the traffic yeah. behind him. So the 11 in the wall... The 11 is Carson Zybart, and then nowhere to go for Christian Gardner in the seven. Another car, that black car, also might have kind of been a culprit, if you will, involved in it. But yeah, that was 20 the 29. to go. 29. There you go, the 29 car uh, of Rob Sherwood. Second time he's been involved in, it, in an accident here today at Dover. Uh, Charles, you all come to pit lane. What do you do? Uh, they did. They uh, Everybody but the top three came down the pit road there. So uh, Matthew Williams, Zach Peterson, Rob Sherwood, who was involved uh, in that caution there. As you can see the damage, those top three did not come down pit road. Everybody right. else came down. And Matthew Williams will now be the new leader. 20 laps to go.
side by side for the final time in our final commercial. We'll take you to the checkered flag. Here's a look at your sawblade.com top five. As Gilliams willing to roll the dice here in the first state at Dover and try to win in a Hail Mary. The finish when we return. We're based out of West Monroe, Louisiana. Uh, we do custom t-shirts, racing. We'll do any, actually any shirt. We'll do uh, schools, churches, fundraisers. We do a ton of event shirts. Uh, as you can see on our board here, uh, all around our uh, banner, personalized. I mean, it, we'll do anything. It doesn't matter to us. We got the custom rugs. Um, we use all the, you know, top quality shirts, you know, inks and everything, uh, hoodies, um, hats. We do embroidered hats. Uh, embroidered shirts, um, you know, just you can call us for anything. Uh, we do offer the bag and fold uh, to where we, you know, you can receive them and they're already labeled and tagged and bagged, uh, ready to give out to your customers. So, so you just call us and just tell us, hey, this is what we're looking at doing. And um, if we're going to put the car on there, it is 125 quantity minimum. Uh, if it's without the car, it's 60 quantity minimum. That's strictly on the racing stuff. Um, if it's a business or something, if you just race on Texas shirts, you know, it's a little bit different. At least, um, you know, you can call us. It just depends on your quantity and ink colors. Everything is hand drawn. I mean, everything. We don't Photoshop anything onto it, onto a shirt or anything like that. Everything that we we go through, everything is drawn, and which is the reason for the uh, art fees. Because uh, we do have several graphic artists that draw for us, and um, you know, they're really good. So, yeah. so what we do is is on any any package that you do, we can we can mix and match. We can do any colors. You can do purple, red, blue, green, and do the rest black. It doesn't matter to us. Uh, with your design on there, we can do hoodies. We can do hoodies, long sleeve shirts, t-shirts, tank tops. Um, it doesn't matter. I mean, just it's, it's almost limitless what you can do. And you can put all that together in that package to make that minimum, you know, requirements. They can call us 318-278-7191 um, or they can email us at bulletprooftees.com yahoo.com or they can go to the website bulletproofteas.com back here at Dover and it's shootout time it is down to the wire for the drivers of the SMB Cup Series presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters and the Mountaineers Outfitters 150 green back in the air Gilliams running away like a scalded cat from a dark night alley. Gone in 28. They're three wide in the middle. Here Look comes Tatum. Tatum in the one. Tatum went from like sixth or seventh to second in one lap, less than a lap, half a lap from seventh to second. And wow. wow. And maybe Gilliams knew he was coming. And he, how he got trouble. Jack Ely's crashed in 54. Along with the 83 as well. Zachary Stone. And uh, we, we kind of predicted this was going to happen, Wesley. Uh, you know, this is, you know, you've got a, uh, to go. There, there's wow. no other options right now. As they go three wide there. And Contact it did not work right out. there. Punched up. He got hit by Fernet. And around he went. Ooh, Zachary they... Stone right there. Plowed into Ely. And there's oh, that, your cost. We got another one up there on the top of the wall. That's also, so, yeah. and that was the 18 of Robbie Helms. Robbie that hit Helms. Him. That's uh, it. Yep. The 83 of uh, Zachary Stowe just kind of trying to slow it down uh, and not get into it and just spun himself out. So uh, unfortunate for Stone. Uh, good news is he will not be credited with the cautions. You see him getting his spot back on the track. Uh, so he was not credited with that caution. 15 laps to go. Going to be probably, what, you say 12 or so by the time we get the green flag. We wow. are going to be in, uh, you know, extreme go time for these guys. But the one I want to point out, I've said I think he's got the best car here tonight. Uh, and I'm not going to say he's got the you know what, because uh, if I can't even finish that sentence, it'll jinx him. So but <laughs> I, I think Ross Tatum has the oh, car yeah. to beat. But I got to tell you, though, look at the restart that Ross, that uh, Matthew Gilliam got. Man, he was gone. And I yeah. think he knew he had to go. He had to go. 
Yeah, he definitely knew he had to go. And, you know, this will be a good uh, test here because we saw how good his restart was. We saw how good Ross Tatum's was to go from, like, seventh or eighth to second in less than a lap with those fresh tires. And keep in mind, and, and this, as good as the restart was for the 28 of uh, Matthew Williams, remember this one thing, Wesley, and this is what's going to, I really think, affect this race. Six laps on the tires of Ross Tatum, 34 for your leader right now of Williams. I don't think oh, he's yeah. got the oh, tires yeah. to stay in front of that one because one, he's got fresher tires with Tatum, and two, Tatum's been fast all night long. My uh, colleague, Greg Rance, jumping into the box, watching the final laps of this closeout. Hello, Greg. Join us tomorrow night for the trucks at Iowa Speedway. 14 laps to go. And again, this race has just literally entered its ninth caution flag. Gilliams had an amazing restart. He pulled away from the pack. But then we look at what the one car did, Charles. I mean, my goodness, uh, the, the one of Tatum passing seven cars to move to second before the caution came out. Yeah, it's, you know, that's why I definitely think he's got the winning car here tonight. And, uh, you know, it's just going to be a matter of time to see if he can get it. The last thing he wants to do is get caught up, uh, you know, in these uh, continuous cautions where he doesn't have a shot to get to the front because they only have a set amount of green-white checkers and the race will be called. So, uh, he's going to get a shot here to try to get this uh, lead. The car may be yellow, but he does not want to keep seeing the yellow as the lights are off. So uh, he's going to get to see what he wants, and that's the green flag. And he is going to try to put this thing in victory lane, and I think he's going to do it here tonight. We, we, we have not even officially got to that cusp of, of talking about overtime. But if it does go into overtime, then we will have three attempts at a green-white checker. However, there is still 13 laps remaining in this race. 12 to go when they take the green flag of the Dryden restart box zone. This one's... And, uh... and again, there is still a lot of racing left to go here with Tatum and Gilliams on the front row. Gilliams has got to get a good restart, Charles. When he sees that flag man throw the green in that driving restart box, he's got to go. He's got to go now. And he does that. Green back in the air here at Dover. Yeah, he does just that. And we're going to keep an eye. Look at the 96, Zach Peterson. He Play got a block on the inside. Peterson. Oh, he oh he's Tatum. contact. Peterson and Tatum. That is not what Tatum wanted to wow. see. Wow. And they're still wrecking on the back straight away. We can't even see it. There. Tatum's turned. That is the last thing Tatum wanted to see right now. Wow. As we go back and take a look here at the replay. And uh, let, we got we have to as we got to go to the drone cam here. And you're about to see right there is the original contact. Tatum gets loose, smacks the 96, actually somewhat recovers, and then, and then it he is got on. collected again. Fernet's involved. That's we the got one car flying well. through the air, Tucker Wingo. And just think, just to top it all off, gets another uh, little tap right Brockton there. Brockton Packard. Yep, from Brockton Packard in 24. Just uh, wow. Uh, uh, you know, we knew it wasn't over, and they're just proving us right uh, once again. And uh, we'll see. Uh, obviously, you know, we know it's plain as dead. It was just bumped there uh, by the uh, 96. Either way, they both have heavy damage. So, uh, you know, they'll they'll take it. Probably they'll go to the back just to get the save from having a worse penalty. But uh, just heavy, heavy damage to both of them regardless. So, unfortunately, uh, they're going to come in. And I want to watch this right here. As uh, we watch Tatum on pit road, I want to see if he has that fast repair left. I don't recall him using it. He's had a clean car all race. So you should see this car get bandaged up and back out on the track. And he does right there. That car's good to go. So the question fast is, repair. let's see. Does he no have tires. enough time? No tires either. No, he's going to stick it out with what he has. 
Let's ride on board with the 99 of Tucker Wingo. Let's see what the wild ride he had a moment ago. Wingo, winner earlier in the season. Bad luck for the 99. Car looks like a modified right now. Watch this. And again, this is... And we're gonna finally <laughs> ready to try to cue it up here. Hang we're on. trying to get the replay. Just stand by. <laughs> and working on our, our our production truck is working on finding it. And, and there we go. Watch we, this. Uh, we have to go back just a little bit further here. Oh, was that after the... Okay, this is on the restart, it yeah, looks like. We're yeah, coming back to the restart here. Yeah, it wasn't much after this restart, so we'll stay here and uh, hopefully we there don't we disagree. Go. But uh, yeah, it wasn't much after the restart, so we're on board with Wingo right now. He's already having a problem with that 29 clearing him of, of uh, Sherwood. He finally cleared him. There you see all that chaos going on in front. And look out. Oh. And that's where oh, you turn. Airborne. And there you see him fly through the air. Wow. And they, that's what was throwing us off. I forgot, uh, Wes, that that uh, caution came out right after the other caution. So, uh, you know, I was, I know, we were trying to find it in the replay queue. And, uh, right. you know, typically you see a caution come out. They're under full power going full speed. But that one came out under full speed. But, you know, right uh you know, right after the uh, caution had just come out so it really it started when they were pacing still so uh it uh it looks like the lights are off we'll get a better look at that pace car here in just a minute as they're double file so it should be off one to go this time by there you go indeed one to go it's gonna be seven laps to go when we uh take the green flag again still not in <laughs> overtime territory yet. So uh, if we see another caution with five or less laps to go, that would put us into overtime. And again, if overtime does happen, we've seen it twice now, three attempts at a green-white checker. Can Matthew Gilliams win this race and make it the fifth different winner on the series for the S&B Cup Tour. Caleb Smith is not one. Neither has Matt Dyer. Jacob Grant, Rob Sherwood, Keenan Massey, Braxton DeWeese, Cody Vernett. None have won. You got to go all the way back to Joshua Altus, the Daytona winner in ninth before you find a winner. Here they come. Eight hungry warlords virtually ready to send it in the dry don't dry restart box. Green back in the air. Gilliams again for the third time. A good restart, but not for long. They're gonna swallow him up into turn one. Here comes Smith to the outside. Yeah, and I'm keeping an eye on Tatum. He's back in 11th place right now. And these guys may wad it up here in the front of the field. They are not done just yet. As uh, there goes the 88 of Matt Dyer. He's trying to get third place. And contact between the 28 wow. and the 15. Deweese is on the move right now. He does not want to settle for where he's at. He's got the modified out. Apparently, he swapped out for it in uh, lieu of the NASCAR. So, uh, where he's going to fight his way. He's up to fourth. He's going to try to get a little bit higher, but uh, already you're starting to see stuff. There goes Deweese as the five goes around of Grant. Whoa, Grant around. Look out. In the middle of the pack. Woo. He just merely squeezed by there. Caution. I, I, we, we saw the caution firsthand, but I want to go to somebody like Tatum. I know he was close to it here. Let's go. What a save. Him. Look at this view here from on board with Ross Tatum and watch what he saw as he was coming in here. Again, he's already trying to fight his way back up through the field, Wesley, and he sees him spin him and just everybody avoiding. How so, about the car that was behind him, Charles, that I think it was a blue car. I think it's Coleman. I think it's him. 
go take a look at Getting Coleman. on the binders. That's him right there at the 51. Watch this. On board with Coleman, who took it to the bottom of the wall. Oh, they about got tangled up on the back stretch. Yeah, right about here. You see the Watch five Grant get loose. Woo! Whoa. Just squeezing by on the wall. Just squeeze it for Coleman. Man, what a run for these guys, too. Just, you know, it, again, it shows the, the talent here. The question is, Charles, can we get this race restarted before going into overtime? Yeah, that is that uh, we are going to overtime now. We're on lap. As though, uh, anything with five to go or less in the race, uh, we will go into overtime. So we have four to go. We will go into overtime uh, here tonight. We're on lap number 146. The official schedule distance is 150. I'm just wondering if maybe they can get back around in time and take a green wide checker before that, be, before uh, the race, before the schedule distance, you know, ends. We've got four to go. Uh, typically, they don't. I know uh, we do have the option if it's a super speedway, they can do shortened cautions. Uh, that is unfortunately not the option for the short tracks. As uh, there you see, three to go, uh, yeah. which would, of course, the light still being on would put us two to go next time. So, yes, we are indeed going into overtime here tonight. No, yeah, we uh, will. So, uh, first of three attempts here to green, white, checkered. And, uh, you know, a big story here tonight, of course, uh, is Ross Tatum trying to go back-to-back -back wins after his first win on the season. He's back in ninth place, but we saw what happened when he was back in eighth place last time. And uh, by the way, uh, overtime will now be happening for the third time this season. Here's information for you. In four races, there has now been, or in five races, counting this one, there has been three attempts of overtime on this series. Smith, Dyer, DeWeese, Gilliams, Massey, in the top five are not winners of the series. Joshua Altus won at Daytona. He is sixth. This will be double file. They will come back around. And I think they're going to take the one to go this time by. They are indeed one to go. And you notice how you saw it fluctuate four to go three to go it will stay at three to go till we get that green uh, flag in the air then it'll go to uh, two uh, laps green flag will come out then we'll get the white flag and uh, hopefully the checkered flag if not if we see the uh, yellow before yep. we see the white and uh, keep in mind there has been incidences or uh, in instances there we'll get that word out where you may see the white flag show up there but if because the white flag technically shows up there before they get to the line it's when they're coming up to the line and they get within so many feet of it so even if they're 20 feet from the line and the yellow is thrown we will yep. be, rack them and stack them and try it again three so, attempts three attempts remember the leader has to cross the line and take the white flag if he does that the next flag ends the race records or checkers if they get a caution before the white they'll come back they'll double them up they'll do it again over time here it's over as charles said smith on the gas on the outside lane he pulls away two to go Shootout one in turn one at Dover, Charles. Yeah, and we're watching these battles. They are all over the place right now. Tatum is on the move. Once again, he's going to get to the back bumper of the four, and he's going to make it three wide down the back stretch, and he's going to slide up just a little bit. He'll push the four up, and he keeps on going. No caution out so far, and caution is out. Caution out. We'll do it again. Got a caution. Trouble. That is the 29, or the 22, actually, Cody Terry. And the 29 as well. Both and the of 29 of Sherwood. You're exactly right. And I think they were involved in the caution the first time in the race, remember? They were indeed. So we're going to find out exactly what happened here. The 29. And 29 gets tagged right there by Grant. Oh, man. Wow, and, Grant. Ooh, 
there's another one involved. Where does the 22 come in? This is the question. So he was on his own. Let's go back and take another yeah. look at that one. As uh, Cody Terry involved in it. And I have a feeling the 14, watch the 14 here. I believe he clipped some uh, the 29, but that's uh, not yeah, Terry's the case. in his own world here. Yeah, look at this. This all happened in front of him. Yeah, look at that. Wow. Oh, there you go. Just oh, a little clip it. from the 29. He did get clipped. Oh, and around he, was, he went. You know, I'm going to look at that. I got to look at that one more time here. And this time, Wesley, we're going to go on board with the 22 of Cody Terry. And look how slight this uh, contact was. As you see right there, he gets by the 14, and you'll see uh, you'll see the trail of smoke when it's uh, starting to unfold here. But right there, and next, just ever so slightly. Charles, we're understanding that there's people protesting that Gilliams is actually a winner of the series. They're saying that Gilliams won a race in in the throwback Davy Allison car. Uh, maybe we don't have that uh, green bar for him. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to take a look at that. Is this a possibility? No. Uh, we might have uh, overlooked uh, that one. And if that is, we have five different winners. We need to be checking our stats here. Make sure we got it. I, I don't see it on my information, but... Oh, and uh, that is yes, it is. Uh, yes, it's it Darlington. Is he won at Darlington. There it is. Yes, sir. So he actually, this is actually the sixth round of the series, and he is one of five different winners. So and, actually, uh, Gilliams does deserve a green bar. <laughs> that, there you go. Our apologies. Is uh, not sure how we missed that one, but. Uh, yes, I, I'm looking at the point standings right now. He has scored fifth place with a win in the number 28 machine. He so, won Darlington. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, again, all the apologies there. Uh, so we somehow overlooked that one. Um, so uh, there has been five different winners in five races. This is round six here tonight at Dover. And if Caleb Smith wins, Charles... He will be the sixth different winner on the series. Yeah, and he's sitting at sixth in points on top of that. So, uh, again, all our apologies. So we were uh, getting these uh, these uh, special little green bars made. Somehow completely overlooked that. Uh, our apologies to Matthew, too, as uh, uh, we missed that one when we were uh, getting stuff ready for the race. But, uh, yes, he does indeed have a win. And we have some people saying, yeah, Joey Petrie won the Daytona 500. Yeah, Joey Petrie crossed the line first. But unfortunately, he celebrated a little too early, Charles. And for that reason, iRacing decided to disqualify him. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, and it, uh, it, <laughs> that's one that's of not them. our call. It's not yeah. our call. It, it'll go down in history as a controversy call, you know, as long as, uh, well, as long as iRacing's alive, but, uh, you know, when it came down to it, it, it was really uh, very simple. And the thing is, uh, from what we understand, Joey took it very well. And it is a cut and dry rule. It was back then. It still is. They had the rule in place since last season. They, uh, they do not clear black flags of any kind that iRacing gives. If they give one by mistake, they'll clear it. But if it's thrown by Iris, a black flag, they do not clear them. That was the big debate, whether they should clear it. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, the race was not technically over. And they do tell you, it's in the sporting code, to do a cool-down lap after the right. race because everybody has to cross the line and until they do the race is not over you can't accrue penalties from the race that's what happened it, it stinks but it is part of eye racing as the green flag comes back out overtime number two here at dover and smith is gone checking out from dyer deweese one two and three to the back straight away 
If they hold it together, he takes the white flag off of corner number four. Race is official. Here he comes. Smith to the line. CRN one to go. Race will end this time by. One to go here, Charles. Final time for Smith. Yeah, Smith has pretty much got this unless something happens. The real question is, can Tatum get up there and make something happen? He's going to gain one spot, but I don't think it's going to be enough for a podium finish. And it's not. Caleb yes, Smith sir. is going to get the win here tonight at Can Dover. you say six different winners in six races? Concord, North Carolina's Caleb Smith, the Nintendo Gamer, wins the Mountain Ear Outfitters 150 here at Dover. Second spot to the missile, Matt Dyer. Daytona winner Joshua Altus will finish third. Ross Tatum coming back to finish fourth. Braxton DeWeese in the top five. Yeah, what a uh, race there. Uh, again, I, I know a lot of people out there tuning in. You can't get a better race at all kinds of excitement here. Uh, for uh, the uh, S&B Cup Series presented by Appalachian Holler Hunters and, of, of course, your uh, Mountaineer Outfitters 150. Uh, probably the quickest 150 laps I've ever seen at Dover. Celebration for the number 12. Another win on the series with another different winner. Caleb Smith for CEM Motorsports. Teammate with Matt Dyer. Will finish one and two. And again, Altus will finish in third. But the celebration began down at the start finish line. Let's take a look at your unofficial results here at Dover in race number six. Six different winners in six races. Caleb Smith, the winner. Matt Dyer will finish in second. Joshua Altis, third. Ross Tatum, fourth. Braxton the Weeks, the top five. Brockton Packard, again, in six. Prayers to you to get better. He's currently quarantined because of COVID. Christian Garner, seventh in the seven. Jack Ely, eighth. Evan Coleman, ninth. Matthew Gilliams tried all he could to get a win. His second win on the series. He'll have to settle for tenth. Yeah, it's, uh, unfortunately, going to get that uh, second one. Uh, 11th place is going to go to uh, Keenan Massey. 12th place is going to be Jacob Grant, who, again, had a good run and just uh, broke it loose there earlier, or late in the race, and uh, he was going to lap down. Followed uh, by uh, Rob Shearwood, Cody Fournette, Cody Terry, uh, Carson Zybart, Zachary Stone, Tucker Wingo, Zach Peterson and Jonathan Woods rounding out the top at 20 and just a few drivers left in there are going to be Robbie Helms, Spencer Hardison, who did not have the night he wanted here tonight, and uh, Will Duvall uh, being 128 laps down out of the race uh, quite early, but uh, a good night of racing here. Caleb Smith, though, picking up the win for his first win. He was sixth in the points, and now he's the sixth different winner here. Uh, on the series here in the playoffs. And we're going to take a quick break. and we come back, we will talk to those drivers in press. What a show they put on. Caleb Smith, the sixth different winner after he tames Miles the Munster on the concrete jungle of Dover.
Welcome back to Dover International Speedway on the iRacing Simulator round number six of the SMB Cup Series. Presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters has concluded. When it's all said and done, Caleb Smith becomes the sixth different winner in six races on double overtime to win. We're going to talk to Caleb Smith here in a moment along with teammate Missile Matt Dyer. But first, let's talk to Joshua Altis of the number 94. He settles for third, the Daytona winner for MP Motorsports. Joshua, a, a crazy race here tonight at Dover, no doubt about it. You come back uh, to finish on the podium. Your thoughts? Man, it's about time I've been back on the podium to talk to you guys. I'll tell you what, man. Uh, we've had a, uh, a rough last couple races, man. We, uh, we've had speed every week. I mean, we've been up front leading laps, and um, if, if the chips could have fallen a little bit differently, I think you could be uh, looking at us sitting at two or three wins already this season. So um, the speed is there, which is uh, encouraging. Uh, you know, I got to thank all my MP Motorsports teammates. Um, we, we put a lot of work into to practicing and uh, and trying to make each other better. But, yeah, man, this, this race was crazy. Uh, started on pit road, had a drive-through penalty for uh, accruing too many incident points in Martinsville. So um, that kind of put us behind the eight ball. But luckily we got the, the free pass pretty quick. And uh, just trying to stay alive, man. Uh, I thought it was a pretty clean race overall. Um, you know, not, not the caution fest that we've been seeing. Uh, recently so that was kind of a nice change of pace to uh you know show what the series is capable of and, and to you know run each other competitively and clean and um you know just when that last caution fell with i don't know 50 to go i, I knew it was going to start getting intense and uh guys were on different tire strategies and it, it was getting crazy so uh yeah we were able to fight our way back to third so i you know obviously we always want to win but uh we'll take a podium spot for sure well, hey, as uh, Wesley uh, has said many times, here was a great race uh, here uh, for you. It just overall an amazing race. You know, coming into Dover, no one really knows how it's going to go. It could be green. It could be a few cautions. Most of the cautions we did have here tonight were at the end of the race. So that's where my question is for you here is at what point, uh, Josh, did that uh, – flip of the switch get turned on that it went from okay we're racing to this is go time i have to get to the front if i want to get a win here tonight yeah for sure i mean it was just like i said we got that caution with with around 50 to go i, I was praying it was going to stay green because i i had actually pitted um for fuel and i think i was going to make it on fuel when everyone else had to pit so um, I was keeping my fingers crossed that I was going to stay green, but that was that was wishful thinking for sure. Um, but yeah, once that caution came out with about 50 to go, I, I knew it was going to start getting wild. And um, you know, at that point, you just try to put yourself in the best position you can. Uh, you want to gain trap position, but you got to defend defend your spots from behind at the same time. And uh, my teammates were were on an interesting strategy. Matthew and and Rob and Zach all had stayed out. I think they were all out of tires, um, so they were just trying to fend you know fend their spot as much as they can. But you know it, it's just going to get wild when it gets to the end of this deal. We all know cautions breed cautions, and you just try to survive and and do the best you can. Real quick, I got to think. Uh, Christian Gardner and, and Appalachian Hollow Hunters for, for putting this series on. Uh, Hornady Ammo, who's my primary sponsor all year. Uh, we had sports night tonight, so I had the, my Washington Capitals on board. So I'm looking forward to getting some hockey started back up hopefully pretty soon. And, uh, yeah, just thank everyone for uh, – thank you guys for the broadcast and all you do for our series, man. This has been really fun. Hard to believe we're, we're already halfway through the regular season now. So we got we got sits to go to the playoffs. So – um, it's, it's just going to be trying to win all the races we can, try to stay consistent in the points and, uh, you know, be, be ready when we go to the playoffs. For sure. Hashtag we love hockey. Again, Joshua Altis finishing in the number three position here tonight at Dover. Runner up, Matt Dyer in the 88 machine. The missile is going to be his new nickname, Matt for CEM Motorsports. What a run. You come so close to winning, had problems. You came back, redeemed yourself. This has got to be like a win for you. Yeah, it, it, it felt pretty good, you know, to finish second on, you know, at that last pit stop. So I had to take, it was, I only had two right side tires left over. So, you know, it felt pretty good. Uh, you know, I pretty much those last yeah, like when I pitted the first time, it was, you know, like, why not? You're like, I'll take a chance, you know, <laughs> and I, you know, I was storming through the field, but, 
you know, unfortunately, you know, that caution came out. And but uh, you know, overall, it was really good. Uh, you know, the second stint, you know, when I just was you know, had to stay out, and I ended up dropping all the way to the back. That was a bit disheartening. You know, just all, almost getting a lap down there. But uh, you know, I got saved by that caution. It was a able to get back on the same cycle. But yeah, definitely three. The last few, uh, you know, green and white checkered side was pretty much just uh, you know, a bodyguard, you know, for Caleb, you know, to protect it from, from everybody else behind us. But I'm like super pumped, you know, ever since we started the, CE, the CEM team, you know, we've been putting on the great performances. So I'm super proud. Well, Matt, you know what's coming. And uh, that just is, uh, he, I get to interview you finally. That's what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> overall a uh an amazing race for you here i didn't get to check the pit board uh to see if it was on there tonight and uh, if you don't know what that is we'll mention that at some point during the uh, broadcast i'm sure uh but you know i, I want to talk a little bit about the track itself it says it's sunny out there right now this track looks awfully bright but uh there were a lot of points during this race where the clouds would roll over and it got really shady and the track would drop about five six degrees and it would come back up how are these cars out there handling when it got real bright and sunny out and then those clouds rolled over did you have to change your line how the car was handling something like that throughout this uh, race in order to you know maintain up front um no, that I mean to me, like for me, no. You know, I I was really dedicated on on the bottom, you know, the whole race because I knew that's where you know, my car was good. Um, but yeah, you know, when it was sunny, it was definitely a bit looser off of uh, you know two. You, you definitely could take a four a lot harder than you could two, so you really had to be careful too uh, if you were to get loose or tight. Um, but yeah, but definitely when the you know, the clouds came in, it definitely snugged up the cars a little, a little bit to go harder, but. Uh, but also back to the pit board. Yes, that pit board is still there. So, <laughs> yeah, so, so goes. There you go. We'll have to check it out next race so all the fans out there can see it. We won't give it away till we show it. It's worth showing uh, <laughs> on uh, the uh, the broadcast. That being said, Matt, we know you got some sponsors on the car. Who are those to make that car as fast as it is? Hey, uh, I go thank you guys you know, for putting on you know, the broadcast each week. Um, you know, Appalachian Hall Runners. Um, you know, for, for putting this series on um also to my sponsors you know uh raise energy and rep sports you know i'm an ambassador for them so if you use my code bald 15 you know on repsports.com you know you get 15 percent off so definitely huge shout out to them that's matt dyer again he'll finish in the second position six different winners in six racers uh the man out of concord north carolina does it again that is caleb smith in the Nintendo number 12. Caleb also for CEM Motorsports teammate with Matt Dyer. Caleb, congratulations. Uh, what's your take of the race here tonight in, in uh, taming Dover Miles the Munster? Uh, can't believe it, honestly. Um, it's my first win uh, ever, honestly, um, since NASCAR 14, but I really don't count that. Um, so I've never been in victory lane. I've never been able to do my own burnouts um, that, you know, because I've won in a, in a league before. So it's, 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 it's exciting. So it was definitely nerve wracking at the end. <laughs> well, <laughs> Caleb, I, I, I have this question and I thought about it as soon as you won based on your paint job on your car. And it's a little bit of a fun question. And that is, you know, you get the win here. You got Nintendo on the car. This track wasn't too greasy, too slippery, anything. It wasn't ridiculous hot. You know, is it compared to anything to Mario Kart? I know you got my, uh, Nintendo on there, so I'm sure you played a little Mario Kart. Did you use oh, yeah. any of Mario Kart experience to help we win here tonight? Uh, the car definitely got sideways. Uh, the only thing when you get sideways, you just don't get any boost. So, um, yeah. So I mean, the the there's one track on a uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on the Switch, and uh, it's like the baby circuit. So it's an oval, but it goes right. Um, I think it's, it has right-hand turns. So yeah, the, the only thing is I just didn't get any boost. 
There you go. No boost, no banana peels, anything like that. The car did uh, slip and slide there just a little bit, but uh, you had to hang on to the win. And, of course, uh, you got Nintendo on there. Any other uh, sponsors you need to uh, shout out there for the win tonight? Um, Shake and Bake and uh, the Shake and Bake Cup Series and Appalachian Hollow Hunters uh, for presenting the series, of course. Um, and I think... Uh, the sponsor for this race was Mountaineer Outfitters. Uh, it was a Mountaineer Outfitters uh, 150 um, at the Monster Mile. Um, and then, of course, our race team, uh, CEM Motorsports. Um, earlier today, um, we got our new logo for our uh, for our team. Uh, we won't be unveiling it uh, until uh, the Tuesday before Daytona Road Course, so not next week, but the next week. Uh, after that um so gonna have to wait a little bit longer but it's 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 definitely pretty exciting uh where where this team has gone since uh since we started uh not so long ago caleb i got one more question for you bud and then we'll let you go um what does it mean to you to be the sixth different winner on this series in six races it's crazy um there's a lot of talented drivers in the field um, and to be one that has secured a spot in the playoffs um, and that has a win it uh, it's it's important uh, to me because I didn't think I was going to be winning tonight out of all nights I thought it was going to be a road course <laughs> six different winners in six events so far in the Season 2 of the SMB Cup Series presented by Appalachian Hauler Hunters. Tonight at Dover, Caleb Smith does just that. A quick reminder, we will be off next Wednesday in observance of Thanksgiving. Enjoy it with your family, friends, and loved ones. The next race will be on Wednesday night, December 2nd at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 Central, from the Daytona International Speedway road course road racing is always totally different than what is on the oval that should be an exciting race for race number seven and again that will be on wednesday night december the second charles your final thoughts before we get out of here a big win for caleb smith as we all get ready to celebrate thanksgiving with our loved ones next week and again this series will take a night's week off yeah, looking uh, forward to a little break. I'm not going to lie, but uh, for the race tonight, six races, six winners. Uh, again, our apologies to uh, Williams there. Uh, we will have you in the overlays. we got two weeks to get it ready, so we will have you in there. We'll have Caleb Smith at it as well. Uh, again, the, the season uh, is starting out really good. Again, six different winners, and uh, to be honest, it could be seven or eight. You never know who's going to win here with the uh, SN uh, V Cup Series presented by Appalachian Holler Hunters. A great race. Again, Caleb Smith now makes it six different winners of the six events for the SNB Cup Series. Thanks again to Appalachian Holler Hunters as well as uh, the Mountaineer Outfitters for being the sponsor of this event. Uh, again, Follow our coverage at LiveSimRacingTV.com and at LSR TV on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as those that are listening on CRN Sports at WeAreCRN.com and at CRN Sports on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Have a happy Thanksgiving to everyone from the SMB Cup Series. We'll be back on Wednesday night, December 2nd. We leave you for now. Caleb Smith wins here at Dover. Six winners, six races. The race to a championship continues on for the SNB Cup Series. God bless you all. Please keep on praying for America. For Charles Wooten, I'm Wesley Outland. Thank you for watching. This broadcast is the copyrighted work of LSR TV and may not be rebroadcast, retranslated, or used in any form without the express written consent of 52 Media LLC and iRacing.com Motorsports Simulations. LSR TV would like to thank you for your support and we hope you enjoy.